Hey, this is Mr. Perez. Today we're going to talk about properties of real numbers, but let's get out Charlie. He better be ready to go. Hey, Charlie, what, what? are you doing? Okay, today we're going to talk about properties of real numbers. Do I have to learn this? Oh, no, Charlie, you don't have to learn this now. You can always come back and learn it next semester. What? Uh-huh. Quit fooling around, Charlie. What? Let's get going right there. Properties of real numbers. Let's begin with the commutative properties. Okay, Charlie, commutative property has to do with the ordering of the numbers. For example, a plus b equals b plus a. It's like saying 3 plus 4 is the same as 4 plus 3. They're both 7. For multiplication, it states that a times b is the same as b times a. It's like saying 9 times 8 is the same as 8 times 9. They're both equal to 72. Well, where do we use these properties? Let's start with this sum here. Notice, 7 plus 35 plus 13. The question is, can we add the 7 and the 13 first? Because that gives us a nice number. It gives us 20. Well, if we apply the commutative property to 35 plus 13 and switch the order to 30, 13 plus 35, bring down your 7, and now we'll work left to right. 7 plus 13 is 20, and 20 plus 35 is what, Charlie? 55. Very nice there. There we go. That's some good kung fu math right there. Now let's do a multiplication problem. 2 times 28 times 5. The question is, can we multiply the 2 times the 5 first? We actually can if we apply the commutative property for multiplication. We'll switch the order on the 28 times 5 to 5 times 28, bring down our 2, and now we'll work left to right. 2 times 5 is 10, and what's 10 times 28, Charlie? 280. 280. That's some good kung fu math right there. Actually, see, we're just really using the commutative property, right, for multiplication there. All right, let's go to the associative properties. For addition, the quantity a plus b plus c is equal to a plus the quantity b plus c. Let's do an example. Negative 3 plus 4 plus 6. Notice the parentheses around the negative 3 plus 4. But we can move the parentheses and place them around the 4 plus 6, right? By applying the associative property for addition. And let's do the parentheses first. What's 4 plus 6, Charlie? 10. That's right. And negative 3, bring that down we have negative 3 plus 10. What's that, Charlie? 7. That's right. Well, suppose we apply the commutative property to negative 3 plus 10. That means switch the order to 10 plus a negative 3. 10 plus a negative 3 is the same as 10 subtract 3, which is, of course, 7. Okay, let's look at this one here. Well, here we have x plus 3 plus 5. We cannot add x plus 3. They are not like terms. That's not 3x. 3x means 3 times x. We're going to talk about that in the next lecture called combining like terms. So we can't add x plus 3, but we can move the parentheses around the 3 plus 5, bring down our x, and now, what's 3 plus 5, Charlie? 8. That's 8, bring down your x, and there it is. You simplified that expression. Remember, you cannot add x plus 8, they are not like terms. All right, what about the associative property for multiplication, which states the quantity a times b times c is equal to a times the quantity b times c? Well, here's an example, negative 2 times 4 times 5. Do we have to do the parentheses first? Well, that's what order of operations says, but we could apply the associative property and first multiply the 4 times 5 and bring down your negative 2. 4 times 5 is 20. Negative 2 times 20 is negative 40, right? Sometimes it feels a little bit more comfortable to multiply the positive numbers first. Just depends on your taste. Now, how about x times 3 times 5? Well, x times 3 is actually 3x, but we're going to apply the associative property first and say, oh, let's multiply the 3 times 5 first, okay? And so 3 times 5 is 15. x times 15, what is that? By the commutative property, x times 15 is the same as 15 times x, which we simply write as 15x. Remember, 15x means 15 times x. All right, y'all, let's go keep going here. The identity properties. Well, the identity properties for addition say, hey, if you take something and add zero, you get the, the result is identically the same thing you started with, meaning a plus zero is a, zero plus a is still a. Now, the identity property for multiplication basically states if you take a times one, you get back identically the same thing, right? a times one is a, and similarly by the commutative property, one times a is a. Where do we use these? Well, back in pre-algebra when we were solving basic equations, Remember, we added 3 to both sides, got them to cancel, right? And that left you with x 
plus 0 equals 8, right? So, x plus 0 by the identity property for addition is x. That's why you added 3 to both sides, because negative 3 plus 3 is 0, right? And that left you with 8. All right. Now, how about the identity properties for multiplication? We use those when we change denominators on fractions. For instance, with those two fractions, the LCD is 6, Charlie. Now, we're going to multiply 5 halves by 1, and we're also going to multiply 1 third by 1, but the 1 is written in a specific form to get that lowest common denominator, right? In the denominators. So 5 halves. What do we multiply 5 halves by, Charlie, to get that LCD of 6? 3 over 3. That's right. Top and bottom by 3, because 3 divided by 3 is 1, right? And for the 1 third, multiply top and bottom by what? 2 over 2. That's right. And so we get 15 6 plus 2 6, right? Which gives us 17 6. So notice, each fraction was multiplied by 1, because 5 halves times 3 over 3 is 15 6. And 15 6 is identically equal to 5 halves. You just have to reduce, right? All right, Charlie, let's go on to the inverse properties. Now, a few sections back where we're talking about the additive inverse. Remember, when you add additive inverses together or opposites together, the sum is 0. And that's what this is stating, right? The inverse properties for addition. And the inverse properties for multiplication basically state if you multiply reciprocals together, you get 1. And so where do we use this? Well, let's go back to our equation. See, why did we add 3 to both sides? Because with x subtract 3, that's the same as x plus a negative 3, and the additive inverse of negative 3 is plus 3. And when you add those together, that's how we got the 0, right? So when you cancel those out, that's why you get 0, because negative 3 plus 3, those are additive inverses, so that gives us 0. And x plus 0 is x by the identity property, and we get 8 for our answer, x equals 8. Now, how about the inverse properties for multiplication, the reciprocal, right? Well, 3 halves x equals 1 third. We've got to solve for x. And here, we're going to multiply both sides by the reciprocal of 3 halves, which is what, Charlie? 2 thirds. 2 thirds, right? Because that's going to give us the 1x, because the 2s will cancel, the 3s will cancel. Remember, they become 1s. And we're left with 1x. How do we write 1x, Charlie? x. That's right, just x. It's so easy, it's confusing. There's 1x. And on the right-hand side, we get two nights. Okay, now let's go back to our work and talk about the distributive property. This is a very important property. Well, here's the distributive property. It's generally used to remove parentheses. So keep that in mind. So here we have a times the quantity b plus c. It means a times b, we're distributing, plus a times c, right? Okay. Well, suppose it was b plus c times a. Here we're going to kind of distribute in reverse. By multiplication, we have b times a plus c times a, right? Okay, let's do an example right here. 2 times x subtract 4. Order of operation says we're supposed to do the parentheses, but we cannot combine x subtract 4. They're not like terms. But we can distribute the 2 to remove the parentheses. Watch. So here we go. 2x. Our operation inside the parentheses is subtraction, so we bring that down. And what's 2 times 4, Charlie? 8. That's right. So there's our answer. 2x subtract 8. Those are not like terms, so we can't combine them. Now, the next one, negative 2 times x subtract 4. Well, here we have negative 2 times x is a negative 2x. Our operation in the parentheses is subtraction, so we'll bring that down. And what's negative 2 times 4, Charlie? Negative 8. Negative 8. And you see, Negative 2x subtract a negative 8 is the same as negative 2x plus positive 8. And that is our answer. Now, a lot of you skip that intermediate step, which is fine, as long as you truly understand what's going on, okay? Here's another one. Negative 2 times the quantity x plus 4. Again, we're going to distribute the negative 2 through. So negative 2 times x is negative 2x. Our operation is addition. And what's negative 2 times 4, Charlie? Negative 8. Negative 8, that's right. And if we add a negative 8, Charlie, that's the same as what? Subtracting 8. That's right. So our answer is negative 2x subtract 8. And that is our answer. So if you're skipping those middle steps in those last two examples, that's fine. But think about what's going on. Anyway, that's enough for now. We'll see.